G'day everyone, welcome back to another video. Well, I have to say the weather's still really crap here. Um, lots and lots of rain, it's just rained for weeks, hardly seen the stars at all. So there's been no real opportunity to do some new imaging. Um, I have got a new 3D printer, so I've been doing a bit of 3D printing. Um, just a bit of a setup here, just the odd extra little bracket and thing for the Samyang um, 135mm. And also, I've just been redoing the setup, oh, grab it over here, for the Red Cat. Um, so, yeah, playing around with Tinkercad and making up uh, sort of various shapes and brackets and things. Um, I do have an ASI 533 MM Pro coming, which I'm going to pair with one of these two. I haven't decided which one yet, uh, but that will be a uh, subject of uh, hopefully a future video <laughs> if we see the stars again. Um, what I thought I'd do in this video was just run over some uh, objects that I actually have taken earlier in the year that never made it to video and I think they're kind of interesting to have a look at. They're targets that are a little bit more off the beaten track. Um, I have been looking for targets that have been less commonly imaged and uh, these represent some of those. Most of these are really from the southern hemisphere but there's at least one that would be um, accessible from at least parts of the Northern, Northern Hemisphere. Anybody who can see Roa Fuchi can um, certainly see uh, see one of them anyway and image it. But um, I, I thought they were quite cool and unusual targets and uh, so let's jump on the computer and uh, have a look at them. Okay, so let's kick things off with um, the first object. In fact, the first two objects are a objects are related to wolf rat stars. So we can talk about wolf rat stars at the beginning. Uh, this is the first one and this is, doesn't have a, a, a name as such for the nebula. It's more just called the bubble around WR16 or wolf rat 16. Um, and I presume that it is this bright star in the middle that is actually um, WR16. Um, and all of this, they feel, has been produced by this wolf rat star. All the stuff around here and this bubble here. Now wolf rat stars are quite interesting. They're some of the biggest and the hottest and the brightest stars. And um, they were identified first in 1867 by uh, George Georges, I think it's Georges Rayet, I presume that's how you pronounce it, and Charles Wolfe at the Paris Observatory. And hence they're called Rat, wolf, no, hang on, that's wrong, let me get this around the right way. That's better. Uh, wolf, rat, stars. And uh, they noticed that these stars were a little bit different to some of the other stars around. Um, but in fact, it wasn't for another 50 years or so that uh, the nature of these stars was uh, further identified. Now, uh, these guys first saw these stars with um, their 40 centimeter telescope which I'll show you here with the name here and um, you can uh, read it for yourself. I will not try to pronounce it, it's just in case my video gets banned for bad language. Now it was noted that they all seem to be depleted of hydrogen and they seem to be just fusing uh, helium into some of the heavier elements. Uh, which is probably why a lot of the stuff that's been thrown around the outside is it's the outer sort of shell if you like of the stars that have been ejected out into the surrounding into surrounding space following on from this they did discover that some wolf rat stars still have some hydrogen that they're fusing but you know they were somewhat different to um, for example our uh, sun which is as we know primarily made up of hydrogen and fusing into into helium now these supergiant stars eject um, a lot of their mass, mainly the outer shells, and um, the this material can be moving at quite high velocities, up to two and a half thousand kilometers per second, and that's why we get these sort of bubbles forming. Now this particular bubble was only actually discovered in 1994, so pretty recently actually, and it's uh, located about seven and a half thousand light years away in the constellation of Carina, so very much a southern hemisphere target. So all this sort of outer nebulosity is thought to have been ejected from an earlier phase in the star and then this is more recent uh, forming this nice circle. Now I quite liked the look of this target, it had a really interesting sort of irregular surface which kind of, I don't know, reminded me a little bit like a raspberry um, or a, I did want to call it the Loganberry Nebula 
but I thought that was pushing things a bit too far. So um, I've just nicknamed it the Southern uh, Raspberry Nebula. I think it deserves a name, it doesn't have one. Um, it's just disappointingly, as I said at the beginning, called the bubble around WR16, but I think uh, I think we should give this a name. I'm not expecting that name to stick, but uh, my image on Astrobin has it as the Southern Raspberry Nebula. So as I said at the beginning, um, this is just an HA LRGB image. Um, I did about eight, just over eight hours of HA, and uh, then the rest in LRGB, so it was um, just nine hours, 38 minutes. The RGB was really just for the RGB stars. So um, yeah, that is this the, well, the bubble around WR16, or as I like to call it, the Southern Raspberry Nebula. So the next target is uh, also related to a Wolf Riot star sitting in here. And at least this has a name. They've given the nebula a name and it's RCW58. Now the central star here that's forming this nebula uh, is known as WR40 or Wolf Riot 40. Not to be confused with WD40, which is something completely different. Now this sort of has some similarities to the Crescent Nebula, which is also being formed from a Wolf Riot star, that's WR136, in the fact that it's got this sort of, uh, it's not particularly circular like the, the Southern Raspberry Nebula, and yes I'm going to keep pushing that name as much as I can. Um, it is sort of uh, somewhat similar shaped to the Crescent, um, not quite so brain-like. Um, but it also has a blue shell like the Crescent as well. Maybe not so well defined, but um, you know, it's it's there. And I kind of really like the fact that it's got these quite interesting shapes to, to the nebula again. Um, and you know, as similar to the previous target, uh, this is all being formed from uh, material being ejected from this Wolf Riot star. This target is also situated in the uh, Carina constellation. Um, so again, very much a Southern yeah. Hemisphere target. And um, I did image this using basically hydrogen alpha and oxygen three filters. I didn't bother with sulfur two because again, did some test um, images with a sulfur two and just nothing was showing up. And then the background was RGB stars. So this was 17 hours and 26 minutes total integration. Uh, there was about eight hours of hydrogen alpha. And then I actually did um, two lots of oxygen three, four hours each. Um, some were five minutes and then I went to 10 minutes to try and bring out this uh, O3 shell because it's quite it's quite dim and quite hard to pull out. So um, yeah, another interesting little target uh, of being produced by these Wolf Riot stars. So the next two targets I'm just going to show you that I've uh, imaged are uh, primarily dark nebula, although Burns 146 does have a reflection nebula with it. The first one I'll just talk about is um, LDN43, otherwise known as the Cosmic Bat Nebula. Now, this is actually located sort of not far from Rafuchi, so um, it's certainly, as far as I can tell, be uh, able to be imaged from both hemispheres. Um, perhaps more easily for the Southern Hemisphere, since it uh, gets a bit higher in the sky down our way. Um, but I really like the look of this target. I first saw this target sort of um, centered in more around this area here and uh, it was uh, very much looking like a bat, in fact looking like um, Batman in some ways. Um, but I wanted to capture a bit more of the surrounding nebulosity here so um, I did do a bit of a wider FOV than perhaps a few um, images have been done on this. It's not an overly common target to have been imaged but there's a few more turning up now. Um, so this one I did with the, uh, let's have a look, I did this with the Esprit uh, in the 2600mm Pro and um, I captured this in just um, LRGB being a dark nebula and, and it sort of did a first round of it and then I went back and captured um, some more. So this is actually 31 hours and 42 minutes. Uh, a lot of that is, there's 19 hours of luminance here. Um, but uh, yeah, this is another target that I uh, was very keen to do and um, I think it's quite a, a, a cool thing, very, very bat-like. There's a couple of um, galaxies around with it as well. 
And then the last target is Burns146. So this is another sort of quite cool target. The shape kind of reminded me a little bit of those water bears um, that can be seen microscopically. It's uh, It's got multiple names actually. There's, um, it's called Cometary Globule 12, I think because of the shape where it looks a bit like a comet. It looks like there's something at the front here and then a tail coming out the back. So a glow at the front, tail out the back and a bit much like a comet does. Um, but it's also called Burns 146, which I think is primarily the, the dark nebula bit, but it also has an NGC number, NGC 5367. One thing I haven't quite determined is whether NGC um, 5367 relates to the reflection nebula here or relates to the whole thing. I'm not entirely sure, but um, again, another quite cool sort of um, uh, dark dusty nebula. There's some uh, galaxies, the odd galaxy sort of in there um, as well with the image. And uh, there's a nice reflection nebula here too. Now this one I did, um, what I do with this one? This was a Skywatcher again with the 2600 mm Pro. And I think I did uh, beta filters. Uh, so it's LRGB. And this was 21 hours um, total integration time. Uh, which kind of might have been pushing my luck in uh, in my Bordel 5 um, skies. I think the dark nebula probably best left to darker skies, but it seemed to come out okay. I think this one is, it's in the constellation of Centaurus, so it is sort of getting towards my light dome of Auckland City, but um, it seemed to come out okay. Um, but I think, uh, as I've mentioned probably in previous um, video with the Dark Nebula that I'm going to try and leave Dark Nebula for for when I can travel up to my area that is more Bortle sort of 3, maybe Bortle 2 uh, and also doesn't have the light dome of Auckland City. Okay look so I hope you enjoyed that video just a bit of a run through some of the more unusual targets that I've been imaging recently. Admittedly most of these are for the southern hemisphere but uh, you know as I said for the cosmic bat if you can see Rofucci and image that then you can image the cosmic bat so I, I reckon it's a really cool target to, to image. Um, and look if you've enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up or consider subscribing to the channel. You can see some of the other videos that I've done and I'm going to have more going forward. Uh, but in the meantime, um, as the t-shirt says, I'm under new management, so I need to get cracking on my big list of honeydews. Coming down.